Nautapla is a place located in the Nubian Desert at about 800 kilometers from the Cairo. And it looks something like this. Well, it looks like this now, but a long time ago in the history, it was inhabited by the people. And there was a proper civilization living here. But why is this place so important? Well, it may be one of the oldest megalith alignments in the world, which means it is one of the oldest astronomical structures which were made by the humans. In the past, the Egyptian Western Desert wasn't as dry as it is today. Now, evidence suggests that in the past there were periods of high humidity and they were characterized by significant rainfall and it turned the place into a savanna and it supported a wild range of wild animals like the antelopes, large giraffes, uh, extinct buffaloes and also gazelles. In the 10th millennium BC, the Nubian Desert region started experiencing an increased rainfall and this led to the formation of the lake. And due to this lake, we suspect that the ancient human populations might have chosen this place to settle because the availability of water is a valuable resource. Despite the increased rainfall, the environment of the region remained predominantly arid. And it was because the rainfall was not more than 100 to 150 millimeters a year. And it was also very unpredictable and erratic. The climate was also characterized by frequent droughts. So it was not uncommon for people to desert the desert for some period of time. So it wasn't a merry land to live. The conditions were still quite difficult. But how do these people make these stone structures and how do these structures relate to astronomy, calendar and the night sky or the stars? Let's find this out. So the stone structures in the region look something like this. And it actually predates the Stonehenge by more than 2000 years. So this stuff is pretty old. Now there are quite a few research papers on the Napta Playa. And the researchers have different views about how do these structures relate to the astronomy or what do they align to in the night sky. Now people started living here in the village by the year 7000 BC. And then by the year 6000 BC they were making their local pottery. They also bought sheep and goat for the cattle and this place was quite established. Now there is a region in the place on entering the Napta Playa from the north and it is called the Valley of Sacrifices by the researchers. Now it is also because they are found about 10 identifiable mounds or small heaps of dust and sandstones. These were constructed using the broken sandstone blocks and contained offerings of animal remains including cattle, goats, sheep that have been butchered. On the radioactive dating of the samples found in the region, they were found to be about 5000 years old. And the valley served as the source of water for the people of Playa. So it was a suitable place to offer sacrifices to the gods so that they could bring in the rains. Now the region contains different kind of rock structures spread throughout the region and these contains different shapes and sizes of the megaliths and they are piled up on top of each other in different arrangements. These are called the complex structures. There are quite a few around here. The largest structure out of this is called the complex structure A and it seems to hold significant importance as a ceremonial center in the late Neolithic period. Now it is also important because it serves as the focal point of all the radiating megalith alignments out of it. Now these structures were built by these people over a long period of time. And these structures also contain a small circle of stone which is called the calendar circle. Now it contains four big pieces of rocks and they are assorted by smaller rocks in the middle. As this region is a desert and over six to seven millennia, the sand dunes were shifted all over the place. So it's hard to estimate the position of horizon at that period of time. So the researchers took an estimate for the horizon to be at a particular angle. Now there are different megalith alignments which are named B and B2 and so on. And some of them are actually fragmented and scattered. So it's really difficult to find out that to what star they actually pointed towards. But for the ones which we have and we are certain about it, the researchers say that the star it most likely is pointing towards is actually the Arcturus. Now Arcturus appears to be most likely to the researchers and it spans in the region of time for about 4600 BC to about 3600 BC. Now Arcturus is actually the brightest star in the northern celestial hemisphere 
and it is actually the fourth brightest star in the night sky. So it's quite possible for the megalith alignments to point towards Arcturus. So the alignments A1, A2 and A3 might actually point towards the different rising positions of Arcturus as the Earth as the star changes path in the night sky due to the Earth's precession. Now researchers also suggest that the alignment B2 might actually point towards a star named Enelum, which is actually one of the stars in the Orion Spell, and it is in the time period of about 4300 to 4100 BC. Now the same line B2 might point towards the star Sirius in the late Neolithic period. The alignment B1 might have pointed towards the star Sirius and Alpha Centauri, which is actually the third brightest star in the night sky in the period of about 4600 to 4300 BC. Now the alignment C is actually not taken into consideration because the scientists think that it was too much scattered and fragmented all over the place due to the sand dunes and there, it is difficult to estimate to what it pointed at. However, there was another study published by Brophy and Rosen and they suggested that these alignments actually pointed towards different stars and they suggested much earlier dates in the 6000 BC. Now they studied the alignments with the GPS coordinate. Now they suggested that the alignment C was actually pointing towards the Sirius in the year 6088 BC and they also suggested that the other alignments were actually pointing towards the stars of Orion and Vega in the year 6270 BC. Now they also suggested that the complex structure A was actually representing the Milky Way galaxy but in much earlier period of time in the year 17500 BC. That, that's insane. Now Wendrop and his team actually released another research paper in the year 2007 and criticized Brophy with these words. These extremely early dates as well as proposition that nomads had contact with the extragalactic aliens are inconsistent with the archaeological record. Inference in archaeoastronomy must always be guided and informed by archaeology. Not only this, there are also two sight lines found in the region where one is pointing towards the north and other is pointing towards the sunrise at the June solstice. So it is quite remarkable. Now this suggests that the people in the region of Napta Plata had keen interest in astronomy and they had deliberate focus on celestial observations. Now this is quite old and it makes it very significant in the history of astronomy. Now it also might have helped people with the directions because at that time there was no pole star. There wasn't any star which was perfectly aligned with our pole. The Polaris was slightly off axis because of the Earth's precession. Now you can also observe these rocks with their origin formations in the Nubian Museum in Aswan, Egypt. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.